the door I'm hit by the same old side Blinded by the lights And I'm going through changes But it's easier with you I'm going through changes And so are you And I find the moments when you're I don't think we realize how much we miss the sunshine until spring comes around. Studies show that sunshine increases the production of serotonin in our brains, which is basically the brain's happy hormone. It can help improve your sleep. And just as a note, something I read is that the earlier in the morning that we're exposed to natural sunlight, then the better it is for you. Sunshine helps your body produce vitamin D, and researchers have shown that being outside and in fresh air for just 20 minutes a day is associated with more energy. So I typically spend a lot of time cleaning indoors, but today we're going to take advantage of the sunshine and spend a lot of time outside today. I've been a little sick the past week if you can't hear it in my voice, but I had to get this video out. I was too excited about it, so I'm just going to go ahead and record the voiceover like this anyway. I hope you all have a good idea of what's coming from the intro section that I did, but I'm going to start off in my house, picking up, cleaning up a little bit and pulling out some of my Easter decorations. Then I'm going to head over to my mom's house. So my mom hosts Easter, so I'm going to help her try and create a tablescape. I tried like six different ways. I couldn't get it right, but um, hopefully you guys like the way that I finally picked with it and then I'm going to head back over to my house decorate our front porch we're going to go to the garden store pick out some fresh flowers and um, try and plant some flowers I do realize it's still cold outside for a lot of y'all but from the feedback I've gotten y'all say that it tends to warm up around May so that's still not that far away but I'm really excited because today's video is going to be a lot of fun I wanted to quickly just share my gratitude for all of you who continue to support me and continue to show up for me week after week. If this is your first video of mine to ever click on, then welcome. I'm glad to have you here. And by the outside of my channel, it looks like I do lots of cleaning motivation, organizing motivation, home makeover projects, decorating, which I do, but the main purpose of my channel is really women empowerment. As women and moms, it's almost like we're conditioned to feel like we're not good enough. But after listening to hundreds, if not thousands of hours of self-development podcasts and books and articles, I share every bit of that on this platform with you. So it's not motivation to just clean your house, but it's motivation to change your life. But let's go ahead and get started in our dining room. I'm gonna put up some spring decor in here, but the first thing I need to do is expand our table. During Christmas time, I shorten the table so that I can fit the Christmas tree in front of the window. But now I'm going to bring out this piece and make the dining table longer. You guys know that I work on the dining table, so usually I have all of my computer and all my stuff here. We don't eat at our dining table we eat over in the kitchen but I am going to make this a little bit festive I'm not doing a tablescape here because like I said we don't eat here and we're not going to be here for Easter we're going over to my mom's house that's kind of our tradition so I will be doing a tablescape at her house later on in this video You had me at a low Cause where you go is where I go I don't These cute wreaths I got at Home Goods last year, 
I am a wreath hoarder. Whenever we kind of redid and organized our garage, I had Chris put up these um, like long poles or wood pieces, I don't know, so that I could hang my wreaths up instead of like having to lay them down, flatten them, or having to get like an organizing bin for each one. And I counted, I can't remember, 22 or 24 wreaths. I used to like to make wreaths a lot. Now I'm like, there's so many, I need to stop doing that. Um, and then when I see a cute one, I'm always tempted to buy. But we have these, we redid this dining room. We put that feature wall in the back. And those three mirrored, what are they, wall decor pieces, I saw a perfect opportunity to hang like a simple small wreath. So it kind of ties in with this tabletop decor. I decorated this in my spring decorate video, which I just got some pieces from Hobby Lobby, created the base, just a few simple stems. It really wasn't hard to make at all. I like having the dining room simple and not over the top because like I said, I will bring in my computer and all that stuff and it ends up looking messy anyway. But next I'm gonna pull out my Easter decorations. The only thing I bought this year for Easter were these um, bunny, like what are they, turf bunnies, grass bunnies, I don't know. Uh, but then when I opened up my Easter decor, I saw that I ha already had some. But anyway, I also keep it kind of simple, or in my opinion, it's simple. I just have this little box and a few things that I purchased probably over the last couple of years. These checkered bunnies were from a place called the Round Top Shop. I got, um, and then mostly everything else, like that checker bunny is from Hobby Lobby. Uh, and then some of these other bunnies are from Home Goods. So basically I have all of my spring decor up. And then for Easter, I just pop in a few Easter bunnies, a few Easter eggs here and there. And then that way it's easy to take down. And then my spring decor will stay up all the way, almost all the way through summer and then almost until fall. So it doesn't feel like a whole lot of work, like bringing up and taking down stuff. So also in my spring decorating video, I did a very modern type console table. So I went to the Target dollar spot and saw these green bunnies, not knowing that I already had the other ones from Hobby Lobby. These ones are different because they're not as heavy. They feel more light and a little bit cheaper. I don't know. I think those were $3. The ones from Hobby Lobby were $9.99, but they were 50% off, so they were around $5. So anyway, they, they both look pretty much the same. But this just seems like a perfect spot to add to my modern greenery console table. Now I was like arranged this. I spent like a little bit of time kind of arranging where I want to put all these bunnies, how it would make it look good. And I realized it doesn't matter because the girls, they just come and they think that the bunnies are little play toys and they'll just grab all of them and put them together. So it's kind of cute because they love the, they love the decorations, but they also, I have to remind them that these are not toys. In this corner, I'm gonna add another spring arrangement. I have these long stems from Amazon and I used that to decorate our front porch with last year, but I decided I'm not gonna add them to the front porch this year. I'm just gonna kinda of add them in this corner. Just like a lot of things with Amazon, it can be hit or miss, but I feel like all the stems that I've bought, I've been pretty happy with. A couple hours from Japan, would you stay awake? I'm losing touch of who I am when you're far away. So as I continue to decorate, I wanted to just take a quick minute to talk about female empowerment. As I know, the majority of my viewers here are strong and powerful women. I wanted to touch on the feeling, like feeling that we're not good enough to do something. And one thing that I have learned over the years is that we look at people and see like, oh, that just happens for them. That's just the way it is for them. When in fact, it's also the way that we create our lives. If we want to make a change, we have to create that life for ourselves. We have to become uncomfortable to grow. You have to understand that you have a purpose in life. And the perfect opportunity isn't necessarily just going to land at your doorstep. You have to go after it. If you want to create an opportunity for yourself, but you're holding back saying, I don't know how to do this and I don't know how to do that and I don't know where to start. My question for you would be, do you know how to learn? 
If you know how to learn, then you can learn how to do. We have so many resources available to us and we're women, right? We can figure just about anything out. Don't wait around feeling not good enough. Go create that opportunity for yourself. But I want you close. So I am headed over to my mom and stepdad's house and I bought my mom this white pot for Mother's Day last year and she never planted a flower in it. So I brought over a flower here. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I got some soil from Chris. So before I came over to my mom's house, I asked him to pack me a bag of soil. So if you don't know, he owns a landscaping business. So I, I didn't know if my mom had any. So I have my little goodie bag full of soil along with the plant into the pot that I bought my mom for Mother's Day last year. So hopefully this will grow and look great on their porch outdoors. So although we do not have a pool at home, my mom and my stepdad do, and the girls absolutely love coming over and going swimming. So I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Aper, for helping us out so much because these older pool cleaners have these long cords and they get tangled up when the girls are swimming and when my parents are swimming and they're so annoying. So when Aper reached out with the world's best cordless robotic pool cleaner, we were all so happy. So no cords, no hassle. The Aper Elite Pro Robotic Pool Cleaner has fantastic pool cleaning capabilities for a sparkling clean pool. The Aper Elite Pro is surprisingly super easy to operate. So all we had to do was charge it for about two hours and then we press the button, it blinks for about 10 seconds and then you submerge it underwater and it will automatically start cleaning. Weighing under five kilograms, the Elite Pro is lightweight and a portable alternative to those big bulkier cleaners on the market, and it makes it so easy to transport in and out of the pool. It has unique wall cleaning capabilities, so not only is it cleaning the bottom of your pool, it's also making sure all of the walls are cleaned. So you know that it's lightweight and portable, but you may be wondering just how powerful it is. It has 90 watts of power and pumps 267 gallons of water per minute through the Apier Elite Pro while the dual fine filters sort out and collect dirt and debris. It provides two hours of cleaning power and once the cleaning is complete, then it'll park itself alongside the pool. So in the box, along with the power adapter, it also comes with a retrieving hook that you can attach to a pole and easily retrieve the cleaner out of the pool. We went ahead and let it run for the full two hours and it was super easy to disassemble just by quickly popping off the bottom and removing the filter bag. So we have some leaves, some pine needles, which the pine needles will get really bad here in the next couple of months some sand from the sandbox and also some residue from when the pool got replastered. So after a quick rinse, you can easily just reattach the bag and get it ready for the next time you are ready to clean your pool. So to check out the Apier Elite Pro, I have a special link in my description box and make sure you use code MICHELLE35OFF for an exclusive discount. So let's go ahead and move inside. This is my parents' dining room table where we will be having our Easter lunch slash meal. And I am tempting to make a beautiful tablescape. I got a couple things from Hobby Lobby and I'm also using some of the decor that she already had. And I make like six different tablescapes. I'll show you what I tried. And every single one I was like, nope not it nope not it so i will just first show you this was tablescape idea number one i really wasn't feeling it so i tried this one i also wasn't quite feeling it so then i kind of rearranged it and put the little egg things in vases but it seemed a little bit too tall so i tried another idea where i just took them out completely added a couple more eggs in there. I don't know, I wasn't feeling it either. So I just took all the greenery out and it was too simple. And there was one bunny harmed 
in the making of all of these tablescape attempts. So I'm really sorry, mom. I hope you were able to glue that back together. So instead of like trying to do all this, trying to make it perfect, what I decided to do was just set the table first. So take everything off of the table, kind of clear my mind, set the table first, and then try and go from there. At the end, y'all can tell me which one I should go with, the one I went with, or if I should change it to one of the other designs. I lose my breath whenever I see you You stole my heart, what is it that you do? As a creator and just in general, I tend to overthink a lot. So just trying to create a different perspective where I can start over was tremendously helpful. So we have these two different napkins, yellow and green. I'm working with everything that my mom already has and I'm testing both of them out to see which ones will go well with the table decor that we have and i think we both decided on the yellow one now we can always go back and change it before easter but if you guys like the other one then for sure let me know in the comments all of the cute little leaf dishes we got at one of my mom's friends mother had passed away and she had like a collection of seasonal decor so it was actually during an estate sale where my mom picked up some of the few unique and cute seasonal decor that she had this massive collection of but now I have a new perspective on things. I can see the space that I'm going to be working in and I'm going to try to create the perfect tablescape for this space. One thing that I personally like for tablescapes is when it's not too tall. So my spot is right there where I'm standing over that pink table mat or placemat and I like to see the person across from me and whenever it's too tall I can't see the person and if I have to take it up and tear apart the tablescape then I also don't get to enjoy it during dinner time when we are actually sitting at the table and looking at it so I like to create lower profile ones I say I create I really don't really do this that often but I'm attempting to um, so my idea here was to just get a little bit of greenery add some nice fake candles to it they can be real and then these little tulips I got at the dollar spot from Target this gives it color and it also blends with the placemats we pulled out some of these glass Easter eggs so I'm just going to put them in places where there's kind of holes and fill out the holes and then lastly, I will add some of these little Easter bunnies. I also got these ones from the dollar spot at Target. I wanted to add the white ones, but as you saw earlier, I kind of harmed one of them in the making. So here is the sixth and final tablescape attempt. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you liked one of the other ones. It's just going to be simple and something we're just going to go with. So lastly here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting the table. I'll show you a little bit of what my mom decorated before I head home. I don't know where she came from. Kinda turned me upside down. I just don't know what to do. I wanna spend the night at hers and bring her one of my t-shirts so it smells like her perfume. Now I really get what the love songs are talking about And 
die Just wanna tell her how I feel Scream it out loud Have you ever been in love? Have you ever lost your head? Have you felt like you were out of breath When you saw her in that dress? When your heart is beating fast and you're sweating so let's head over to our garden store, pick out a few plants, pick out a few items that are nice and springy, then head back to our house and get to work. I came here and got so many ideas for our backyard, but one thing that I wanted to make was a little tabletop pot full of succulents. They had so many different types of succulents here. They were a little bit pricey, but they had the individual succulents where I could make my own pot. So that is the plan. And also I needed some plants to put in the front pots on our porch in front of our house. We let the girls pick out a couple of succulent plants along with some of the flowers. Our sad front porch still has some poinsettias in the pots and these need to go. I don't know how they're even still alive out here, but they were beautiful at the time. And we also have this garland. I couldn't figure out what to do with it, whether I was going to donate it, take off all of the lights and, and give it away or keep it. I don't know. So we're going to get rid of that garland. And this boot, we're going to put some cactus in there but these are the two pots that I have this vision that I'm going to plant these beautiful plants in so we'll see how it turns out I'm going to start with the bougainvilleas I'm going to take all of the soil that's already in this pot Take some of it out so that I can fit this as the base. Usually you just tend to like plant one plant in a pot, but when I was at the garden store, I saw all sorts of ideas where they had multiple plants in one pot. I loved the look at that. So that's what I'm going to attempt here. So this is going to be my main focal point, the bougainvillea, and then I'm going to add smaller plants around it. The next plant that we picked up was the, what is this? I can't read. The Artemisa? I don't know if I said that right. But I'm just going to kind of plant that in the middle and then just start planting some of the other plants around it. So I let Sailor pick out the color for the next plant and I, I, yeah, I totally failed on showing you what that was. The sun was in my eyes. I couldn't see. So um, I'm just going to, she picked out the color. There was several different colors and she wanted the pink. So we're just going to go with that. The next plant was the Blue Days and I like how it gave like an over, like a waterfall, like it draped down. So I have height and then I also have it draping down and then I have color in the middle and I think it looks really cute. All of these plants, I believe, are high sun, which this area will get a lot of direct sunlight. We have a little mini hose that comes from the sprinkler system that we just plug in there. So basically every time the sprinklers go off, then the these plants will get watered. So if I had to be in charge of it, I can't guarantee that they would stay alive, but luckily we have this to help. So this looks so much better than just having one plant in there, or at least in my opinion, it does. I'm glad that I did a lot of mixing and matching. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you know, like the first bit of sunlight, it, whenever it's been winter all along and it's warm enough to wear shorts, well, that's today and my legs have not seen the sun in many months so i'm going to try and get a little bit of a suntan while i'm out here as well now i haven't been great at keeping green things alive and yes chris is like obsessed with the outdoors and plants and grass and 
all of those sorts of things. And I never have been like, I kind of didn't care. I think everything just always looked good that I never was picky about it. But in the backyard, I want to get more into designing the landscaping in our back flower beds. Uh, we want to create like this little cactus area. And also I want to redo the side of our house with a nicer stone walkway and create a little vegetable garden. I know that's a ton of stuff, but last year we had, we grew vegetables like through a compost where you just like get seeds and stuff left over from um, food, like fruits and vegetables and you put them in your soil, making a compost. It's good for your soil. But in that process, we accidentally grow stuff. Like we've grown pumpkins on accident before. Last year we had cherry, to or was it last year or the year before? We had tons of cherry tomatoes. There is things that we do plant on purpose, which were cucumbers. We've grown those. We've had, we make pickles out of them. I say we, but it's really just Chris. But this year I wanna create like a real designated area from it and not just growing random vegetables by accident. Let me know if you grow your own vegetables, um, any tips or tricks that you have that work well, that don't work well. I need all of the information. Let me know in the comments below. Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name. Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights Doing what we want to Doing what we need to do This is one of the mini wreaths I've made in the past. I basically just bought the bundles from Hobby Lobby of these tulips and then I used this um, like really thick wiring and just tied it around the wreath. I kept it outside last year. I plan to hang it on the door again this year. Although some of the tulips are coming off, I probably have about one or two more years left of this one before I need to make a new one. Next, this boot type pot is also in our front yard. We'll probably move it to our backyard whenever we finish our cactus garden, but we bought a couple different cactus, cacti, whatever, that we're gonna put in this boot because it looks kind of westerny and we usually just don't put anything in it at all. We mix the soil with some rock to make it look like a succulent kind of cacti, cactus garden. you by my side let me feel your love again just the two of us and we could stay up all night kissing under street lights doing what we want to doing what we need to and last task for the day well this day this video was done over a couple of days is to put together this succulent pot that's going to go on this table outside so first i'm just going to put down some soil and then just arrange the succulents what however it looks good i'm trying to break up the soil a little bit when i put them in there just to make sure that they stand up straight i don't really think you can mess this up too much but i'll let you know in a couple of weeks if they are all still thriving and alive But as I'm finishing up here, I hope that this video gave you a lot of ideas 
and just overall brought you some good energy. It would mean a lot to me if you did decide to subscribe. For one, it makes it easier for you to find my videos and also lets me know that I'm doing my job and helping you out. As always, if there's any content in particular you wanna see from me or any motivational topics you wanna to talk about, leave me a comment letting me know. But let's go ahead and finish up this succulent. 